Chapter 1, Monday, September 5, 1977, Labour Day. April Schwitzwetter was staring out the window of the back seat of, of a station wagon and was proceeded south, returning from spending Labour Day weekend at Lake Winnipeg in New Hampshire. As they had done for years, school was going to start the next day, as it always had in Brokers Town, New Jersey. It was the last day of April's almost one month grounding began on her birthday in early August. Eight, April fought back to that day, the yelling, the high heeled shoes being thrown at her head, the sudden end of the surprise party for her thirteenth birthday. It started out well, everyone was having fun, especially nipping off the bottle of whiskey that was poop food from out of her garage. Happy birthday, dear April. Happy birthday to you, a smiling young friend sang in the backyard, opened up from the basement. The white stone gravel patio was sparingly decorated with helium balloons. There were burgers on a built in gas grill, a pink cake on a wooden table, and matched the rest of the outdoor furniture. Wow, thanks guys. This is out of sight. Never had a surprise birthday before. Somehow, April knew to wear her new white sh- shorts, sh- shorts and red tub- tube top she bought at a mill. Well, the money she earned from her picking weeds in the yard. April's parents finished the burgers, wished her a happy birthday, and disappeared for the rest of the evening. They knew they did not want the first boy girl. They knew they wanted, not wanted at the first boy girl party at April's house. April was cute for a thirteen year old, but she's going for sexy more than cute. She wore no makeup. Her parents wouldn't let her. She was slender and her hair was blonder than usual due to the fact her family had just returned for a month. Long vacation down on the shore. Lots has transpired during that month. A chance to live in a life separate from her friends back home. What they didn't didn't know wouldn't hurt them. She thought, but she couldn't wait to confine her best friend, Cassie, about some parts, the boys, the party, what she experienced and learned about all that. Happy birthday, April! It's Vince, her next-door neighbour. He was her childhood friend, a year younger than April. He handed her a small package. I would have this at Boy Scouts. April opened a small box with, with a gold foil top, obviously taken from one of his sister's rooms. It was just it was a wooden cross laying atop a bed of cotton balls from the bathroom. Wow, Vincent, this is so cool. He suddenly gave April a peck on the cheek. Vincent's face turned red. April giggled a little too loudly. Vincent turned and walked quickly away. The sun was clearing to set when Michael and Paul boys from a nearby neighborhood started passing around a bottle of whiskey. April watched Melissa Trotter take a small swig. A hand grabbed April's shoulder and turned her I got you this present, April. I stole it from Woolworths. Jay was Vince's brother. He was older than April, turning 13 back in December. He had a classic Italian good looks. Dark, messy hair, rounded nose, dimple in his cheek, chin. They were close friends, but recently things were beginning to change between them. April wasn't sure if it was good or bad, but she liked the way it made her feel. Jay was certainly going out of his way to pay more attention to it. More than he did when he would play in the woods in their backyards, or in the street playing kickball with everyone. The gift was a green hoodie. April would wear that hoodie for years to come under a white down vest and had rainbow stripes running up the front and down the back. April put the box down and Jay and April walked over to see to where Melissa just involuntarily shivered upon taking another swallow of the illicit whiskey. Why did you get that? Where did you get that? Jay asked. It's April's carriage. In April's carriage, Paul replied. Can you believe it? There's a whole case lying there, right there. Actually, Jay could believe it. The Hayward kids were familiar with the contents of April's parents' carriage. April did not know why her parents only went to the liquor store only twice a year. But it was a lot more than just a case of whiskey in there. 
It was the, wasn't the first time a bottle was laced it either. April swiped a bottle of vodka, brought it down the store. Actually, April had Jay do it one time. The garage was standing open. He's always seen that April's mother watched her like a hawk. So he dared not be seen with a vodka bottle when my mother would step into the garage at any moment. Jay hid the bottle in the bushes as she did hell raising Tina's friend do. April managed to sneak it upstairs into her luggage. Paul Murphy and Michael Hill were from a neighbourhood on the other side of Sussex Avenue. It was in walking distance and recently they seemed to end up outside of the front of April's house all the time. April wondered if her mother actually invited him to, be, to the party. She made a mental note to ask her tomorrow. The question never got asked. It wasn't too much later when April's mother threw open the sliding doors, lost doors from the kitchen, appeared at the deck and hovered over the backyard. She started screaming, You bastards! You want to get out of my property now! I'll call all your parents. April, where are you? And now, her voice was loud, shaking and somewhat slurred. April was in the, on the side of the house in the shadows, under a bedroom window, taking a hit of a joint with Casey. Casey had a sister in the high school, was a buddy buddy of some a pop with some of her pop smoking friends. Holy shit, Cassie, my mother's gone ape shit shit. April waved her hand and attempted to clear the pot smoke away. She went running around the corner. Mum, I'm right here. Go guys, gotta go gotta go. She yelled at the audience, all still in attendance in the backyard. She ran in the basement and up the stairs. Mum, what's going on? Just then April's dad stepped in the front of her, blocking her progress towards the kitchen. Face was red and he was trying to hold his composure. I got Mum I got Mum to go upstairs, he explained. Mr Trotter called to say that Melissa arrived home drunk tonight. April face framed shock. Would you like to explain what happened? Her dad said. Dad, I had no idea. Table lied. Really? She continued. We were dancing and eating cake. The only dancing going on with the boys dressing like they always do to show off. The rest of the cake was finished off. The munchies set in. In fact, Linda and Dennis started to feed the cake to Melissa before her mum picked her up to try to sober her up. Suddenly April's mum came barreling down the stairs, turned the, the, the bottom turned the corner at the bottom, saw April and her dad and threw a high heel shoe at April's head and Janet and Tim, awakened by the commotion, came quickly down the stairs, just in time to see April who effectively blocked the shoe with her arms. It clattered the floor as the shoe mate came hurtling down the hallway along the clear same path as the first one. Janet and Tim burst into tears upon the realisation of mother throwing spiky shoes at her daughter. Father, for crying out loud, Harriet, what the hell? Abel's dad rushed out to his crazed wife, ushered her back up the stairs. Harriet yelled, How could you, you bastard? You grounded me for a month. Then he finally came back downstairs. He found Janet and Tim, aged eleven and ten, consoling and smoothing each other as close as siblings do, eating top tarts in the kitchen. Once he got them back into bed, he found April in a room on a phone. It was the princess phone. A private phone number she got for her last birthday. After her parents got fed up of not having the phone at home available for their own use, Janet didn't, couldn't wait till she turned twelve and could get one too. April quickly hung up the phone. They not even saying goodbye to whoever wasn't talking to, remembering the one month Grammy. April, I'm dog tired. I can't talk any more tonight. I have to talk more about this, but I'm trying to figure out if you did anything wrong. He sounds sad, more than upset. April's counting on the lucky stars. She didn't get caught smoking pot with Cassie.